Amen. I want to talk a little bit about warfare. I want to talk a little bit about the victory of the cross of Calvary. But in, and we'll just mix it up a little bit and see what God uh, does in our lives today. But Jesus won an amazing victory for mankind. How many people believe that? Yeah. Won an amazing victory for us. He triumphed over hell, death and the devil. He triumphed over it. How many people really believe that he triumphed over the devil for you? He triumphed over hell and death. Romans 8, 1 says this. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is very, very similar to what Chris was sharing about the different words in, in the Bible, the different passages that promise us certain things, but they're all conditional. And it says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. So what it means to me is that there are a lot of Christians that can be still walking in the flesh, still living according to the flesh and wondering why God's not doing something in the Spirit. God can't do anything in the Spirit unless we're in the Spirit. I, I shouldn't say it. I'm just saying the things that we're asking Him for. God can do whatever He likes. They do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So let's look at it again. We as believers choose either to walk according to the flesh or walk according to the Spirit. I want to encourage you. The Bible also says there, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So I believe as Christians, as believers, we have to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. Whatever God says, whatever God wants to do, He can do and He will do. Do you believe that? So it also says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 uh, through to 17, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While, when will this happen? When will this, when will this go on? While we do not look at the things which are seen. See, there's, a, there's a, a spiritual application that God wants to bring. And He wants us to focus and keep our attention on the things of the Spirit. The devil wants us to keep our attention on the things of the flesh on what's happening through you or to you or whatever's going on around you, whether your neighbor's angry with you or what's going on. All these things affect us. But God says, I want you to keep your mind and your attention on the things of the Spirit. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which, because these things are temporary, but the things uh, which are not seen are eternal. Again, let's, let's focus on this. Let's let's do an exercise where we say, I'm not just going to look at the natural things, I'm going to look at the spiritual things. God says that we can do all things through Him who strengthens us. So, and it also says there's nothing is impossible to our God. Maybe if we're going through some things, how many people actually have been through things? <laughs> There's not one of us that haven't been through things. But sometimes when we're going through something, we think we're Robinson Crusoe. We think we're the only person that the devil is chasing. We think we're the only person that's going through a hurt or a disappointment. But there's all of us, every one of us, there's not one of us that haven't been challenged or been afflicted or things happen in our lives. But, you know, and it's, and it's some very, very interesting things. But maybe, maybe, if we rejoiced in our light affliction, instead, uh, not rejoicing for the affliction, but rejoice in it, instead of complaining, we might get the victory. If we get our eyes off that and get our eyes on things. I was just thinking, perhaps we should read Romans. And I, I would have, that study, I was going along to those meetings there, but I'd love to get your notes on that. Because I, I believe that we, read, we really, really as Christians need to get a fresh revelation on the book of Romans. 
I honestly believe that there are so many gems in that book. And I would really, really encourage you to, to read uh, Romans and Corinthians, perhaps with different glasses on. Not just looking for self-centeredness or, or whatever it might be, but listen to what the Spirit of God is saying and how you can break through, how you can smash the enemy's plan that he has over your life, how you can uh, do those sort of things. And, and I believe it's uh, amazing. Look at these things with different glasses. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of God compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who uh, live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. It would appear as if God speaks a different language to us. He's trying to encourage us that we are pilgrims on this planet. What is it if a man should gain the whole world but lose his soul? What is it if we could, if we could get air, all the good things and all the wonderful things in this life but go to hell? And I believe that God's wanting to express to us as people today that there's something that is more important than this life that we're living now. It's called eternity. And that God wants to get us ready for eternity. And He wants us to keep our eyes on the things of the Spirit. He wants us to understand that, you know, that we have been brought with a price. That because Jesus died for us all, He died for us, He, he, he paid a price. He paid a ransom for me. He gave His life for me. I, 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 I belong to Him. <laughs> Is that right? So really, I should not live for myself anymore, but I should live for the things of God. I should live for Him. Do you believe that? I'm saying it today that perhaps we should look at a few things a little bit different. Should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. I believe it's the world system or the kingdom of God. The Bible says this. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 I don't believe for one minute that God wants us to, to live uh, a life of lack or, or necessarily with nothing. I believe that God is a God of blessing. Do you believe that God is a God of blessing? But there's, a, there's different blessings that, that God wants to reveal to us. I want to tell you there's something that, that is more precious than gold. There's more precious than silver. There's more precious than houses. There's more precious than anything. It's a peace that settles on the inside of you. There's a peace that passes all understanding. There's something that, that's, that says, and I'm gonna say it again because I've said it a few times, all is well with my soul. There's a thing there that can disturb us and get around us and, and cause trouble and, and, and chaos and goodness knows what else. But I believe that God wants us to know that God, that He is God, amen, that He is real. I'd like for you to have a look at the book of Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Very interesting uh, scriptures. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. This word of God is alive. When the Gideons send these books out, they're not just sending out fodder. They're sending us something that's alive. Some of the kids might trample them under their feet, but I want to tell you there's some there that will take them to their heart. There's some, some there that will, will read it and devour it and allow it to, to minister them. Have a look at Hebrews 4 verse 2. Another interesting scripture here. It says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Word of God is powerful, it's alive, it's got to be mixed with faith. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10. Have a look at that with me as well today. Hope you don't mind if we just read a few scriptures, is that okay? Because I believe that the Word of God is alive. It says here in uh, 2 Corinthians, I'm, I'm in Romans, I better find 2 Corinthians, where is it? Oh, so, oh, sorry, I've got it. Uh, no, hang on. 
I mean, sorry. Thank you, Jesus. We don't even have any birds to distract me today. I'm doing a good enough job on my own. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10. Is that all right? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The weapons of our warfare, they're not natural weapons. They're, they're mighty weapons. They're powerful weapons. Though we, though we walk in the flesh or live in this fleshly body, uh, we do not war according to the flesh or the ways of man. We, there's, a, there's a whole new way of living. We used to sing a song many, many years ago. I found a new way of living. <laughs> It, it's, it was sung, we sang it that many times, but, but Christianity is a whole brand new way of living. Old things have passed away, all things become new. We don't try to fight people in the natural. We know that the weapons of our war, warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What we've got to remember is that the enemy is already defeated. His power is broken. I want you to read with me in Revelation uh, 12. It's going to read from uh, 7 through to 11. It says, And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, friend, it's going to be, not going to be quiet in heaven, amen? <laughs> then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. And the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Put up your hand if you're a they today. <laughs> Come on. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. War broke out in heaven. James 4.1 says this, Where do wars, come, wars and fights come from? Do they come from your desire for pleasure, that wars in your members? See, there's an inward man and there's an outward man. There's a spirit man and there's a flesh man. There's a, there's a thing there that wants to please self, but there's something in the inside of every one of us that also wants to please God. There is a war against Satan and his fallen angels, demons, that has been totally and thoroughly and mightily won for us by our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. There is a war against Satan and his fallen angels that has been, everybody say has been, totally, mightily, awesomely, whatever way you want to say, won for us by our, by our Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't have to fight in the Coral Sea battle. I might have been a little nipper at the time. But I live, live in the freedom that those men who fought and died for. Amen. I live in that freedom today. They fought, I believe over 600 gave up their lives for that freedom. I don't have to fight demonic, the demonic realm. I am to resist him. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I don't have to fight him. I have to resist him. But you see, where does he attack me? He doesn't attack me necessarily in the realm of the spirit. He attacks me in the realm of the flesh. He attacks me there and he causes all troubles or he'll tell you you're not good enough or you're this or you're that or goodness knows what else. But you've got to resist him. You've got to push him away. Say, that is not true. I resist that. 
I resist that. And as you resist that, you will get the victory. As I said, I didn't have to fight in the Coral Sea back, b- battle, but I'm so glad that we won the battle. Amen. And today I live in that freedom. I don't have to fight the d- 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 demonic realm. I just have to proclaim the victory of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To Samuel 22, 32 to 35. Let's have a quick look at that. This is what it says here. For who is God except the Lord? Who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power. How do I resist the devil? I resist the devil by proclaiming what the Word of God says. Who, for who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arm can bend a bow of bronze. He's given us a shield of salvation. He is our God, amen. It's God who arms me with strength. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's His power. It's Him him who is my power. He makes my way perfect. He is my strength. God is, is, it's God who sustains me with strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He gives me strength in my arms and my hands that I can uh, make war with my hands so that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. All supernatural things. God himself wants to make you a great warrior. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to rule and reign. King David was delivered by God supernaturally many, many times. A lion, a bear, and a Goliath. What was uh, this man's great strength? In 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, the Bible speaks there, it says, How long... Are you going to mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him? He said, fill your horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse because I'm going to anoint myself a king. Fill your horn with oil. I'm about to anoint my man for battle. I'm going to anoint my man for battle. God, I believe, is about to anoint his church with fresh oil. There's an anointing that's going to come upon the church an anointing with fresh oil. We no longer will be passive, but mighty men and women of war. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Something happened in the realm of the Spirit. Friend, I, was, I believe that the church, there's a great shift that's going to happen in the church. There's a shift from self-centeredness. There's a shift from from just wanting to be a a bless me club. There's a shift from from just wanting the the, the nice things. But there's a shift that's going to, I believe, it's going to be the heart of God that's going to come into His church and it's going to cause the people to rise up and not be self-centered, but they want to be about God's business. Amen. Amen. Because there's people that are going to hell. There's people that are lost. They're broken. And I love it there. It says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that very moment, from that very hour. The Spirit of God came upon him. And and something happened in this young man's life. He was a shepherd boy, yes, but something happened. He carried on shepherding. He carried on doing things. But all of a sudden there was a war and the armies of the living God were out there. And they were so focused on the size of the enemy. They're so focused on what the enemy was doing and and the roar and the shout and goodness knows what, that they could not see their God. But a young boy that looked so insignificant and so inferior and goodness knows what else, he starts walking up the hill with with some cheeses and some biscuits and crackers and goodness knows what else. 
And he comes into the battlefield. But you see, this young man has been anointed by the Holy Spirit. This young man, now the power of God is upon him from that moment on. Now he's carrying something. Church, we've got to come to a place where we become carriers of the mighty power of God, where we become carriers of the anointing of God, where we become carriers of the victory of the cross, where we understand what the cross did for us and what, who we are in Christ. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, we resist him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, devil, that is a bunch of lies. We are the king's kids. We are champions. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We are the church. We are the anointed. Amen. We must start to proclaim what God says about ourselves and not our feelings. Our feelings will take us down. And this young man comes on the scene and he starts, uh, he starts hearing the, the talk and things like that. And he starts talking to his brother and his brother starts to annoy him and starts to rebuke him and starts to pull him down. And the boy says, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Church, let me say this today. We are not here just in a bless me club, but it's time to get up of our blessed assurance and it's time to realize that God is relying on us, the church, to rise up in this hour to become carriers of the man and carriers of the anointing and carriers of the victory and take it and win the battle in Jesus' name and set the captives free. We are not here to play church. Is there not a cause? What is the cause, friends? What is the cause? What, what is the cause? Just for you to go to heaven and get your mansion? No, we might as well drown you right now. <laughs> That's all it is. No, we're here to be the church. The church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ, far above principalities and powers and dominions and might. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You should put a sign of applause. <laughs> Amen. Is there not a cause, friend? Is there not a cause? There is a cause. It might take you out of your comfort zone. It might take you out of something that's, yeah, but it'll take you into something that is more powerful. And David, that, that, he didn't understand what was going on when Jesse poured oil all over him, but the power of God, the anointing of God came on him from that very moment. Now he's walking into a situation carrying a few cheeses, but it's the anointing that was going in there. You've got to realise wherever you go, you carry the anointing. You carry the anointing. I carry the anointing, hallelujah. I just want to be a, 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 an ear tickler preacher. I want to be an anointed preacher, hallelujah. I want to carry the anointing. It's the anointing that smashes the yoke. And the anointing, the anointing. And he said, is there not a cause? And then he started to say, you don't have to worry, I'm going to fight him. And the king hears this story and the king calls him in. And the king looks at him and says, look at you. Who do you think you are? You're nothing. You can't fight him. You're just a youth. And he's a man of war. He said, hey, he said, there's something you don't understand. There's something you don't understand. And friend, I, I, I pray that God would bring understanding to us. I, I, wa I want you to realize some things here today. And I, I want to read some of this stuff to you because I believe it's so very, very important. And let's go to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, amazing. I, I get excited about David. I get excited about him because it's, so, so ex it's just exciting. Amen. <laughs> It says here in, in, in uh, 17, it says, And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel on the mountain on the other side of the valley between them. And the champion went out of the camp of the Philistines, uh, Goliath and from Gath, and he weighed all the stuff that he had. I don't want to read that in here. You can read that yourself. <laughs> but he said something there that, that, that got my attention. Because when he spoke to them, and, he, and I, I believe he was speaking the truth, he said this, he says, am I not a Philistine? And are you not a servant of Saul? Friend, we are not here to serve man. 
where he, I'm not a servant of man. I will serve man, but I'm a servant of God. Yeah. If he can re- render you down that you're just a man and you're a servant of man, he'll keep you down there. But friend, I want to tell you, I want to lift your vision higher. We're no longer servants of men. We're servants of the Most High God. Hallelujah. And we carry the authority of the Most High God. We carry the authority that He has given us. We carry the authority of this Word of God. And He spoke those words over that guy. He said, no, 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 no. I'm a servant of the Most High God. You don't understand some things. Verse 36, it says, Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Let me read it. Where is it? Over here somewhere. This is after he said, he said, you know, you can't do it. You're only a youth. Of, uh, and he's a man of war. And David says, your servant used to be, keep his father's sheep. And when a lion and a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. When it rose up again, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant was, has killed both lion and bear. Listen to this. This is how we got to talk. We got to learn to talk. And this uncircumcised Philistine be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the poor of the lion and from the poor of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Paul said to David, go. (laughs) David went out. Verse, Verse 40. And it says he took his staff in his hand and he clothed himself with five and chose for himself five stones from the brook. He put them in his shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling and it was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And when the man who bore the shield went before him and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, He disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. But the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Friend, what I'm saying is you have to resist what the enemy says about you. You've got to resist it. And the only way you can resist it is by speaking something positive. By, by being positive. Friend, if you've got sickness, if you've got a problem in your life, if you're going through hell, if you're going through some stuff, don't let that become the focus of your life. So many people, all they talk about is their problem, their negative. All We've got to start talking about the answer. We've got to start talking about Jesus, amen. We've got to start talking about what God says and not, not, if He can keep you focused on your sickness or the poverty or the negativity, God cannot get it through to you. But David, he, he cursed David by his gods and the Philistine said, uh, come to me, I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And when, and then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Friend, you got to realize that you're coming with something more powerful than any devil has ever had in his life. Amen. You're coming with something that's more, more, more triumphant than any devil sticks. Amen. He can have whatever he likes, but I want to tell you, you've got to realize, and he said, you might come like that, but I come with something so much more powerful. I come against you with something so much more dynamic. I might only have a few little pebbles in my bag. I might only have a slingshot, but I want to tell you, in the hands of God, it is more than enough to take you down. And friend, I want to tell you, you've got to realize inside of you when you come against that sickness or that disease or that poverty or that thing that's coming against you, don't look at it. You say, you might come to me with arthritis. You might come to me with this. You might come to me with that. But I want to tell you right now, devil, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts and I defy you, defied him. But I want to tell you right now, you're going to go in Jesus' name and smack that sucker right in the middle of the head. I did all the rest to get to this part. (laughs) But I 
but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, not me, the Lord will deliver that sickness into your hands today. In other words, he's saying, you have authority over that condition. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines, the birds of the air, the beasts of the earth, that all the earth will know that there is a God. It says there that David ran towards the Philistine. And as he took that pebble, you might take today a word from God that it may be something simple, simple, with me, there were certain things, certain scriptures that, that just penetrated deep inside of me that I, that I could get a hold of and that I could take it and just strike the enemy with it and see him flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him and he will flee, amen. And you, you can get a truth today and you can hold it and you can put it in your sling and you can hurl it and you can say, I'm coming against you sickness in the name of the Lord of hosts. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care because I know that greater is he who's in me than he that's within the world. If I don't stop doing this, I'll, my arm will fall off. So <laughs> <laughs> Bang! And that sickness and that disease and whatever it might be has to go in Jesus' name. Perhaps if we didn't talk about the problem so much and talk more about the answer, we'd see the job done. Perhaps if we started reading the Bible with different glasses, because every promise is conditional. He could have been like the rest of the army and says, you know, you're right. But he never said that. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. The Bible says this. It says that as that giant comes thumping down, I love this bit. It says that David went and prevailed over him. Friend, there's nothing better than when you put your big foot and prevail over that thing that's been harassing you. <laughs> when you put your foot on that thing that's been prevailing over you, and he took out his sword. Well, not his sword, he got... Oh, man. Then he picked that hair thing up by the hair. <laughs> Dragged it. But you know what happened? What happened is this, that the rest of the people, all those that were hidden in their caves, all those that had been running away, all the backsliders, all those people that had, had taken off and had lost sight of their God. Can I say this? The church basically have lost sight of God. We've got a different God. We've got a bless me God. Bless me. He is, but seek first the kingdom of God to get the blessing. All the, the backsliders, all those that had died in their, uh, lost hope. All of a sudden, they saw this young man prevailing over this Goliath. But every demon in hell, every enemy of the, every army person in the Philistines, when they saw what had happened to their champion, they ran in fear. See, you resist the devil, the devil flees from you. These, these, the rest of the guys jumped up and they ran and they ran and they pursued the enemy. But there was something else that happened. When they came back from pursuing the enemy, they plundered their tents. I believe that we, the church, are going to plunder hell. We're going to plunder 
thousands upon thousands of backslidden, broken down people. We're going to plunder. I'm not talking about us, church. I'm talking about church. There's only one church on the Sunshine Coast. You just happen to come to this little spot, spot here. But I believe that the church is going to rise up and we're going to plunder hell, amen. We're going to take people out of the jaws. I, I, I see kids that have been broken and destroyed, ready to shove heroin and all. They might even be on heroin, but just life's mess being pulled out of the jaws of hell and totally restored and made something beautiful out of their life. Hallelujah. Give them back their dignity. Give them back their life. I see people broken, distraught, marriages smashed. I see the going in there and bringing restoration. See, we are the people of reconciliation, amen. The God of restoration. He's a mighty Christ. He's a mighty God, a mighty God, a mighty God. Holy Spirit. Stand your feet. Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Raise up your church, Lord. Make her strong, Lord. Pour out your spirit on your church like you did to David. And let the power of God come into us from that very moment. Father, your church, your church. Father, your church is being attacked with sickness, disease. Lord, the media with different high-ranking men and women that have been caught or accused. I'm not judging them, Lord. I don't know whether they're guilty or innocent. But it's your church that the enemy is defying. It's coming against your church, Lord, to try to pull it down, to, to make it look something that it's not. We are not a bunch of pedophiles. We are not a bunch of losers. We are king's kids. And my God, I pray that you would raise us up. And Lord, that you would raise up a standard against the enemy. And Lord, sickness and disease that's attacking your church, cancer, all this stuff, my God, the attack that's, that's attacking marriages, filthy alcohol that's destroying lives, drugs. My God, I pray that people would be filled with your spirit. They would not need these substitute things to try to find joy. My God, we take authority over unclean things, immorality, pornography, people that are getting caught up in stuff. Break the stronghold of the enemy, my God. Raise up your church. Build a strong, Lord. And my God will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I believe today that some people here that are, You've picked up a pebble and you're going to strike the enemy with that pebble. You've picked up something and you're not just going to cop it anymore. You're just not going to let him pour out his verbal vomit all over you. You're not going to let him pull you down and drag you through that hurt and disappointment. I see people weeping and crying and smashed as the enemy pours in this fury and wrath. But you're, you're going to make a stand. You're going to take one of those pebbles and you're going to put it in the sling and you're going to say, devil, no more. You might have all that that you have in your hand, but I have something more powerful. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Friend, it's the time to smash. Allow the Lord to guide it. 
If you're in this house right now and you believe you picked up a pebble. <laughs> Actually, I picked up a boulder. <laughs> You might pick up a pebble and you say, I'm going to use that pebble. And the Bible says this, one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. I would love to come into agreement with you today. And leaders of our church here could come and pray in agreement with you today that that pebble will strike the mark and bring that Goliath and bring that giant and bring that thing down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've picked up a pebble today, There's a bit of grit on the inside of you that says, I'm going to break it. I'm going to smash every devil. I want you to quickly come out and stand out here today. I want the church leaders to come out and stand here with us today as well. Come on. Just come if you picked up a pebble today. I'm going to use that thing to smash. Nikalai riandu kasoto katai O kakabahandi Nikalai randai If you're too shy it might be a good thing to make yourself It's come in Jesus name Unclean spirits came out with loud voices Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 